Well, now back to one of our big stories today. An Oakland County judge ruling the Oxford School shooter is eligible for a sentence of life in prison without parole. Now we want to get to some expert insight into the process and how that decision was made from the judge. Joining me now is George Danini. He's a criminal defense attorney with Butzel George, and we appreciate you coming in. I remember when all of this broke months and months ago, you actually came to the Oakland County Jail, and we, we kind of debriefed. So That's I right. really appreciate you taking the time, especially on a Friday evening. But in terms of um, talking about this case, because there's a lot of insight. Karen McDonald ran on a campaign saying, you know what, I'm, I, juveniles should not have life sentences. But when I sat down with her, she said, you know what, there, there is an exception in this case. So talk to me about what the judge, what made the judge make this decision? Well, look, obviously this is a, a terrible thing that has happened. Um, Ethan Crumbly pled guilty to, I believe it's 22 counts, including a terrorism count. Mm -hmm. um, had he been an adult when this offense was committed, he would get a mandatory life in prison without the possibility of parole. However, because he was a minor at the time of the offense, and frankly still is, uh, the judge has to go through this Miller hearing, mm -hmm. uh, about a decade old Supreme Court case, where he's got to go through these five factors to determine whether a sentence of life without possibility of parole is appropriate for this particular minor. And he is 15. He made the decision that yes, you know, he could be behind bars now without parole. I know that there was a lot introduced. That hearing was days long, right. you know, and, but I know that they mentioned a little bit about there were video recordings, there were journals, there were words. Give me some specifics on what you think from your insight and perspective really played a factor. Sure. So look, I think the law is designed to, because a minor's brain is not fully developed, they're impetuous, they don't know exactly the, the ramifications of what they're doing at that young of an age, and so that's why the law is set up this way. And so what the prosecution did is they had evidence, I think there was a 22-page journal mm -hmm. uh, that he had where he wrote specific things down about what he was going to do. Uh, he researched things uh, pretty substantially. He, he downloaded a map of the school. Um, he researched what the maximum penalties were in the state of Michigan. He said things like, you know, I'm going to do this, and then when the cops come in and breach the school, I'm going to surrender, I'm going to plead guilty, and I'm going to get life in prison. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lot of thought that went into this, at least from the evidence presented, and I think that played a big role in what the judge decided today. On one side, some will say, you know, she, he had a questionable background in childhood or, you know, the parenting was brought up, but the prosecution said that isn't a factor in making this decision. What do you think? Look, I think it's a factor. I certainly think it's a factor. He, there was evidence presented by the defense that his parents were alcohol abusers, drug abusers. I mean, for goodness sake, the father, uh, uh, well, bought the, Gun, right, yep, his um, and neglected him, and these are all terrible things. I do believe that the judge said that that was a mitigating factor, mm -hmm. but not enough for him to, to supersede make. all of the other evidence that was introduced. Exactly. All right, a major day in this case. We do appreciate you taking the time and giving us your insight. Of course, thank, thank you, George. for having me.